Hey guys, welcome back to Easy Life Today. This is the big one, this is the milestone. We have reached part 100 of our Stuka 19 career mode and we are uh, starting our best of nine last 32 match against Jimmy Robertson at the China Open, which is for us the penultimate tournament of the season, I'm pretty sure it is anyway. Uh, was it obviously for these uh, two just gone the tour champ or Jill Brotter Open or Tour Championship? I think Jill Brotter. Penultimate, obviously, they couldn't do the China, uh, China, they didn't do the China Open because of, they didn't do the China Open. I think last year, I think it might be because of Covid, but uh, I suppose I can partly get that. But why not just do it at Marshall Arena because they've done everything else at Marshall Arena, like they haven't bothered to travel to the venue. Like, I never bothered to travel to, I don't know, the Barbican Centre for the UK Championship, they never travelled to the Temper Drum uh, for uh, German Masters, I think it's called the Temper Drum, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, yeah. And yeah, so. But yeah, it's a big tournament. Not one that I've ever watched, really, but that's not because I don't consider it major. Maybe I never knew it was major. But I did, about, I did know about other big tournaments, like the International Championship and Shanghai Masters. Probably, the reason I didn't watch it, I think, uh, fairly understandably, is because time, because of just time zones, really. You know? And this... You know, when it's the afternoon session in China, where they're doing this tournament, it's about 6am here. Or certainly, when I remember one year I was watching a bit of it, it was 6am. That morning session, or that afternoon session. It was a morning session as far as I was concerned, so yeah. And then... And then, uh, And then, yeah. The evening session was about 12 o'clock here, so, you know, midday. It's not really a tournament that you can... It's kind of all about time zones, I suppose, is the problem. You know, it's a good tournament, that's, that's the sad thing. And if it was a little rubbish tournament, I probably wouldn't care. But it's a good tournament, that's what hurts a little bit about not being able to watch it as easily. I suppose I could record it, but I don't have the patience sometimes to sit through... But you know but who has the patience to sit through a pay, frame patiently that the player you're not supporting is just scoring all the balls and winning, you know? No one likes that. Completely got that wrong. Because that black does not pass. It wasn't the shot I, I was like, I was playing for. I was playing to get the other side of the black, but uh, it just didn't work out at all. So that's the case where Dave Hendon should come out with his. That hasn't really worked out at all, you know? He's an expert long potter and he's taking this on. Gotta go for this. What? I missed it to that side of the pocket? So we could either just... So basically when Captain Goodspeed plays, what he does is he plays absolutely awful and he wins. That, that's Captain... That's, so we're trying to do Captain Goodspeed, play awful and win, that's Captain Goodspeed's motto. Like, it, it, it might as well be. I mean, the guy plays so rubbish, what? He's just missed. I just walked away from the, uh, the camera for a moment. I don't know if you heard, the sound was a bit different, so it was probably a bit noticeable that there's something. But yeah, oh right, he's left a ball in the jaws of the pocket, what am I doing? I would have liked to have started such a milestone episode with a 147, but uh, let's not talk about 147s just yet, because uh, we want to know how that went in the Tour Championship for me. Let's just say it didn't end, didn't end happily. It wasn't a happily ever after. It wasn't a fairy tale. It's very hot today. Extremely hot. It's 26 degrees, I think. It's the heat wave in the middle of July. Time of viewing is probably about a week and a bit on, so you probably don't know as well much what I'm talking about. But yeah, that if you remember back to a couple of weeks ago, or, or whenever, there was a mid, there was a heat wave in the middle of July, and if you're not watching in 2021, well, in July 2021, the middle of it, there was a huge heat wave. Mid-twenties, you know. That was appalling. Why can't I play well? Like, I'm playing trash. Like, I'm playing trash. I wanted to play well. I really wanted to play well. I'm absolutely tired, but... Oh, heat drains you. Heat really does drain you, though. Nine. 
I mean, I went for a run at like eight o'clock this morning. I got up very early, and I've been out all day. So, well, it's now about quarter past half five. In the afternoon. Got home about got home about forty five minutes ago. Is it just me or does J Rob look like Ronnie on this game? Like I thought, wait, that's that's like, that's Ronnie, isn't it? What am I am I scoring? I'm pretty sure I'm not scoring. Then I thought, no, J Rob just probably looks like Ronnie. Just look at him. He looks so much like a Sullivan. I have to say, he's been the better player so far. He's capitalised. He's capitalising. He's playing well. He's actually playing really well. If we're going to turn up and play like an idiot, we are going to get beaten today. We are definitely going to get beaten if we carry on playing like an idiot, because, well, that wasn't particularly good, but he's got a bolt colour. Oh, well. I think this red at the back of the pack goes. No, yes. Well, this has been some break from Jimmy Robertson. Make no mistake, take my think away from this. This has been an absolute spellbinding break. And yeah, he's got a red into the yellow pocket. He's got that red as well. This has been a very tough, good match play, this is. You know, that's a fantastic shot. That was beautiful. He cannoned those and brought the pink out and the red out. You know, he's so pop the pink and leave it safely on his spot. You know, he's uh, laughing his way to victory at the moment on this frame, you know. I think that was frame ball, let's see, just see if he can make this entry. It'll be interesting to see, he's doing really well at the moment, I must admit. I'm quite impressed. And I'm not normally impressed by the AI. Well, I'm not going to come back for two snookers, it's high, it's just not. It's just not someone I'm interested in, really. Oh, nearly caught the middle pocket bump. That wouldn't have been particularly good. So yeah, Jimmy Robertson has um, stunned us, so to speak, in that first frame. And when I say stunned us, I don't mean stunned us by taking the frame. I mean, he's capable of taking a frame. Of course, I'm not that good, and he's not that bad in this game, clearly. Played better than Higgins did in the first frame of that tour championship. No, not this time. Close, but, but a miss nonetheless. I'm just shocked by. But you know, I'm just shocked about how well he played to take that frame. You know, he played absolutely fantastic, and I haven't really looked at the camera yet. That is an absolutely atrocious camera angle. Well, this, the form doesn't continue long into this frame, as he's missed. Not a bad return, or safety, or whatever you want to call it. I don't know if I'd call it a return because the ball was down at the bottom end of the, the top end, if you like, or whatever. Down by the business end of the table. If you like, I'm just going to go for this. I'm just going to go for this, full blooded. And what a shot it was! Sound happy with that? Just uh, got to knock this long range blue in. Missing a few of these lately though. So I'm not too hopeful. Seems to be my weakness at the moment. But that one was perfect. Right in the heart of the pocket. Beautiful shot. Absolutely wonderful. Playing uh, alright it seems today. Don't seem too bad. Mind you, this could go wrong. Let's trust a little bit to luck here. I'd say luck's pretty good. So it's been pretty good to us. Leaving us a nice shot on the blue. 
Oh, I thought, I thought it was gonna go wide for a moment. Just the way it was going off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play for the blue again from this third red. Well, I could actually play for the black, but I don't want to tie it up, so. I'll just, well, I could play for the pink. Nah, I don't fancy it. Just play for the shot to make your next one as easy as possible. That's the idea, really. Seem to be pretty good with the blue on this on this frame, this break. Because yep, yeah, looking at looks staring right down the barrel at a fourth blue here. This is a lot of blues. This is a lot of blues, you know. But as long as uh, you pop the balls, build a bit of momentum, maybe go on to make a century. It probably would work out better than taking all blacks. Well, not all blacks, obviously. Nothing's better than taking all blacks in this game, is it? But taking some blacks and running out of position. Hasn't really worked out that, you know, that's not my finest shot ever. Not gonna lie. Yeah. It's not my best. Definitely not. It's poor really, that shot. I'm gonna chance this my luck at this again though. Oh what a shot. What a lovely pot. Now a couple of good shots here, and I could really be in business, like for real. Meaning I could have the back, black back on its spot, and with it free to one pocket. So I'd say that's pretty. I'd say I want to win there if I get this red. But this red's not an easy pot. Like Neil said, this is no gimme. Think it's there. Think it's there. Well, there. Very there. What can you do here? They're impressed with that shot. I think Neil just said I should be very pleased with that shot. Well, I played tougher shots. And I've had tougher shots, and you haven't called, and you've talked about missing them like it's a formality. So, you know. But like I said, this game makes the shot harder if it's got more angle rather than if it's long. Whereas a long pot in real life would be more tough than a short, a short range thin cut, I suppose. Oh, that was such a tough pot. That was genuinely a tough pot. I was debating over it for ages and I thought, I got this. Oh, I knew it was, oh, it was inevitable, that miss. That was such a tough pot. 
I mean, in real life, that's a formality. That's like, you're, you're an idiot if you don't get that in real life. But that was such a tough shot on the game, like, I had no hope. I really wanted the century break, it just kind of would have been nice. You know, I know, I'm, I know I'm probably going to win this frame, I mean, it would be an embarrassment if I lost it now. And especially with where the balls are, it's pretty much all in my advantage at the moment. You know, if I lost it, if, I was, if it was playing John Higgins or someone here, then I probably wouldn't be saying it's an embarrassment if I lose. But if I'm, but as I'm playing, not a top player in the game. Don't mean, no, don't mean offence to Jimmy. He's a good player, but not like top sixteen class. And that's just a matter of fact. He's not top sixteen. You know, he's he's, he's genuinely he's generally going he's naturally going to be an easier opponent than Higgins or, you know, Higgins or Wilson or Trump or or, or, or Selby or whatever. I'm just not enjoying it now that I've lost the chance to make a century. You know, that, that, that century is what keeps you fired up for a frame. The chance to make a big clearance that you're happy about. It, it really keeps you fueled up. Once you lose that fire to make a century, you lose, you lose your motive to win the frame. You're not bothered if you win or lose it, almost. Unless it's against a top player. As a top player, you want to win every frame you can. Winning a frame against a top player feels like a, like a little victory. Whereas winning a frame against a rubbish player in, a, in this game, I'm not being offence saying that players are bad, I mean they're all better than I am in real life, but against an easier opponent in this game, winning a frame against them feels like winning one over the target number of frames in the match, so if I won one frame of this match it would feel like winning a fifth of the match rather than a whole, it, it wouldn't feel like a victory, it would feel like a fifth of a victory. Like, I'm not saying that it feels like you've won a match when you win a frame against top player, I'm just saying it feels like a mini victory, like something to celebrate. It feels like less of something to celebrate against Robertson against this Jimmy Robertson because you know you should be winning frames like you expect to win. I expect to win against the top players because I'm just thinking that I'm really good and that if 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 he can play like he being Captain Goodspeed or whoever, if the, if this if this person can play then why can't I? He won't be happy with that. I'm just play, I'm just throwing this away, haven't I? I'm just throwing this away. I don't think that was a complete like idiotic shot. That was completely stupid, uncalled for, you name it. That was completely... God knows what I was thinking there, really. Like, I know it's not dead simple, but, you know, what? like I said, once you, once you can't make the century, you lose your fire to play. One. You know, I'd be really angry if I didn't have a 3-1 lead at the end of this ah. episode. Well, I wouldn't be angry, but I'd just be feeling like I've played awful, you know? If I, was, if I was behind, I'd be really scared. Right, okay. Well, I don't think he's... Yeah, I think we are going to be making it one piece here. Highly doubt he's going to win this frame if I pop this yellow, which I have done. Although that's an absolutely terrible shot, really, isn't it? Because it's not an easy green, and it really should have been. This green should have been a formality. But I've left something that's missable, and I've missed it. By a very narrow margin. Well, he will come back because he only needs one snooker. I'll be flabbergasted if he doesn't come back. Well, he's done the inevitable, and that was to pot it. And he's got a bloody snooker little git. Well, I, I don't think we're going to... If we if we miss this, I think I'm pretty sure we'll lose the frame. So, this is do or die here. And Frost is die in this frame, I think. Because he will be putting us back if he doesn't like it. Because the AI they're allowed to on this game. Little git. You did not deserve that frame. Maybe I played rubbish, but you, you certainly didn't play good. Git. You've conned me out of a frame by a point if you pop this black. I don't believe what's happening. This is episode up. This is supposed to be a special magical episode. I think I'm playing like, epi like this is episode zero. Or like I've gone back to... I'm playing worse than I was at the start of this series at the moment. Well, I'm not. Because I would have considered a break of 43 something magical then.
But I've, I've got it all to do at the moment. I think I'd take 2-2 two, two if I could get out of that, but I'm going to have to win a frame to get 2 all at the moment. And I mean, against Jimmy Robertson, that just makes me feel... I'm not, I'm not insulting Jimmy. You know, I feel like it's a cliche. I feel like I feel like I can't just say... I can't just say what you all know because I don't want to get dumb for, like, saying players are bad or for people to slate me or something. Because I'm not saying they're bad players. I'm just saying... I'm just saying they're weaker on this game because of their lower ranking. Oh my... Oh my god, when it rains it pours, doesn't it? That's just proof. That's proof. I've bloody snookered myself. And I'm not even playing a... I'm playing a rubbish player. Well, as far as the game's concerned. Well, anyone outside the top 16 on this game is trash, basically. Like, you can beat anyone outside the top 16 by whitewash pretty easily. Well, you should be able to. At the moment, I'm struggling to win a frame. I mean, I know I can win. I'm not going to win this. Well, I would expect to win this match. It'd be a very embarrassing loss if I didn't. There wasn't much about I, much. There wasn't much that I could have done about that break in the first frame, and the way I lost that last frame was just annoying. You know, part of my fire's already lost in this frame because I can't make a one four seven. But I'm still going to try for a good break. I was almost going for the black then, thinking I could make a maximum. So you know, that's the fire on me to make a maximum. That's how much I want it. I do want it a lot, the maximum, the prophecy, and I know I have to work for it. I don't just expect it to be given another plate. Eight. I deliberately played like that, played for that. That shot was very, very deliberately done, but I haven't left myself what I call optimum. I was got a good, I got as good as I could out of that red. I've got one red out, I'll take it. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. That don't go. The green, oh my god, if this don't green don't go, it's actually a joke. When it's really pouring, isn't it, for me? This is, this is pouring. It's not just raining at the moment, it's pouring. When it rains, it pours. Struggling. What a shot I pulled out there, though, on the yellow. Oh, wow, what a chance this could be. Well, I've still got a lot of fire left in this frame because, you know, I know I've taken low value colours now. I've accepted the fact that I am making a 147. I'm just bothered about the century break and winning the frame. Obviously, I want to do it in style with the, the century, so, you know, I don't just want to win the frame, I want to win it with the century. But priority is to win the frame. I almost feel like saying priority is to make the century because that's literally how I feel. I'm more annoyed about losing the last frame, and not. I'm more bothered about like, the last frame because I didn't make a century rod than losing it. That was just a half-hearted attempt to kind of free up some reds, and this is a better angle. And there are already some partly loose reds, so it's probably going to be easier to. Get, get onto a red, even if I don't get the optimum split. I think this is probably the right pace. Oh, Neil's half, he's approved. But do I approve? I, I, yeah, I definitely do. There's a red into the yellow pocket, if nothing else. Yeah, that's probably the one I'm going to be taking. Yeah, I think it is. I think this is the red that I like the most. Bit tricky. Looks good. It's good. Ah, it's beautiful. We're on the brown. Or the green. Whichever I prefer. Ah, I think I prefer the green, yeah. Got the angle. Got the angle to get back towards the reds. Yeah, the brown might be worth a point more. In the long run, the green's going to help you get back to the reds, which is going to build the break back. And there we go, I freed the pink as well. Which is certainly a massive help. Well, I could actually go for that red. If I fancied it. <laughs> that was a silly choice, but uh, it went, and it was probably just because it was on a plate, you know. 
it seemed like such a good option that it was hard to say no. It was just good for a laugh. But you know, I took some silly. I took a silly shot on last week. I don't even know if it was silly. It wasn't even last week for you guys. It was a couple of days. Was it a couple of days ago? Or was it just yesterday? I haven't actually. By the time of filming this episode, I haven't actually worked out the schedule for the China Open. How I'm gonna upload videos. Because that last video is more just part of the tour championships. I put in the thumbnail and title. You know, it pretty pretty con. It pretty tricked you a little bit that last one. You thought, ah, it's a long episode. You must have come back into that one. Actually. It's a long episode because I played another match in it. I played a best of three. I played four frames, not just three. Yeah, played well. So I played the one beside. I played the uh, last frame of the Higgins game, and then I played the China Open first round against Carrington. But I'm really enjoying this break. This is a really good break. Don't want to jinx it. Good positional shot. Very good positional shot. Very, very, very good positional shot there. Don't mean to. Uh, well, I do mean to blow my own trumpet because no one else is going to. Neil Founds and Dave Endon are kept quiet about a shot that I was very impressed with personally. So if they're not going to do it for me. Then I'm going to tell you that I think it's good. So that's what I'm doing. That's straight up. Just telling you. This is giving me nightmares. Just again. <laughs> it's like deja vu there, you know? The last frame. Oh. Don't know if I, I didn't know if I was going to get a delightful double kiss there or what. I heard a commentator call it a delightful double kiss once because it was. It worked out really nice. I can't remember when it was, what it was, what tournament, who did it. But I remember them calling it a delightful double kiss. I imagine John Parrott said it. Although I really don't have a clue. I think that's the frame. Well, this has been an absolutely wonderful break and I'd really love to clear her up here. I'll certainly just make the century even if I can't clear up. Just about all right there. I don't know Neil Fan said nicely played. You know that was very close to being catastrophic. Oh, hit the power bar on the head. But I'm not going to take the pink because I initially had planned. I'm going to take the blue, and this is much thinner than I thought. Much thinner, but it's not thin enough to put me off. This looks as if I pushed that, but clearly not. You know, it will tell you if you're going to push it by showing it as a foul. I'm sure you've read, I'm sure you've like a red sort of aiming aid. I think. Yeah, like that, a red aiming aid. You see the red line, the red, there you go, red. And that's not because I'm touching a red, it's because it's red. So it's because it's a wrong, you know, red kind of ne has negative connotations. Connotations of doing things wrong, getting things wrong, you know.
struck that very, very well. And I deposit the red. It's going to whack this in. A little bit of screw back just to hold the key. I thought I'd miss that. <sighs> right, just a few more pots to the century. These three bolts will do it. Get me to the 100 milestone. Need it to pull up. Has done. Too late. I think that's just about in time. You can still get this. This is much tougher than I would have liked there. Oh! It was going to be right, never mind, I missed the century by a matter of... Six points? Five points. Six points, yeah, yeah, because it was a break of 94. So last frame of the episode coming right up. Shame about the century though, couldn't make it, but... Uh, Never mind, break of 94 is, uh, is nice. I feel like I've won a clean frame. It's better than, it feels nicer than winning it in dribs and drabs, you know. Yeah, I think I'm just going to have to knock another red out here because there's not much else I can do with this shot. Uh -huh. Game misinterpreted that quite clearly. I said I'm going to knock another red out. I didn't say I'm going to knock Not really the four of the five red, the reds, six of the reds, One. and the little cheat pots it as well. Oh my God! What a little rascal! Well, that's end of break anyway. What? How did that go? What? This is just insane. How is he making a break out of this? <sighs> oh, and he misses. And he misses such a simple formality of a shot after making only fourteen measly points out of that. This is so stupid. Oh man, I've got an obnoxious headache. Not because of the game, just because of the sheer heat. Like, I could literally, like, I could literally just have a, I could literally just sit in an ice bath at the moment. Oh my god, I'm absolutely roasting. I might just go chuck a load of cold water on myself. Oh my god. What the hell do I do here as well? So I really hope you're enjoying part 100, this is the one, this is the milestone. Special day. Who knows, we may see a part 200 in the future. Well, we would do, I think, if we if I do another season. I hope so, I hope to do another season. Oh well, completely misjudged that for a plant. So I didn't get anything. But, you never know. Great shot, that's a really good save. I was about to say, great shot, I completely screwed it up. What are you great shotting? There we go, nice safety, is it behind the pink? Nice. It's got past the pink and it's into the bulk. Certainly to my liking, but anyway.
Now, we have got a very, very tough half chance. And as I say, very tough. And we took that in the most glorious manner. And while we deserve all the points we can get here, because that was an absolutely wonderful opener. Like, you could call me impatient for going for it so soon. Or you could call me for brave, choosing not to play the safety. And I hope you'd, hope you'd call me the latter, because I don't think that snooker's all about safety, you know. Of course, it's not all about potting balls. It's a game, the whole, the whole package makes the game at the end of the day. But, you know, it is more fun ultimately to watch a player potting balls than to watch safety. I don't mean to, don't mean much disrespect to anybody who prefers safety play over century breaks. You know, sometimes the safety battle is really interesting to watch, you know. A lot of the time, they are, a lot of the time, I must admit, safety battles are pretty more exciting than century breaks. But maybe sometimes they're either too boring or too tense and sometimes you just... Oh my god! And sometimes you just can't hack the tension of them. And it just becomes horrible to watch, especially if the player loses at the end of it. The player is pointing. Mm. One. Three. So, um. I was going to say Stuart Carrington then, but uh, Jimmy Robinson back on the table after we miss a pretty tricky blue. I'm missing a lot of those blues lately. I don't think it's down to getting the aiming game wrong, I think I'm just uh, messing up on the uh, power bar side and just misjudging it. And with such a long shot, a slight effect in power bar can cause you to completely miss. Not by a very, very long way. Believe it or not. I thought, I, was, I thought I'd play better in this frame. But Jimmy's got Jimmy lead of more than 10 points. You know, 13 points. Pretty impressive. I don't know if there's a century still on. No, it's not. 75 remaining. This frame's actually been pretty rubbish and scrappy. In fact, this frame's actually been extremely rubbish and low standard. This frame has been rubbish. That's the conclusion I come to. It's not been an exciting one compared to what we would like for certainly such a milestone episode. Beautiful shot though. See, beautiful could be you know I played I played a couple of beautiful balls in this frame, and you know I'm gonna need another good shot here. You'd have to say because this certainly doesn't come easy. Chance here. Nice and slow, forcing it in. Along the cushion. Right, how do we get into these? Can we just go for this? Um, I just heard a new one there. I just heard a new phrase on the commentator's box. Shot to nothing here. I've never heard that one before. I didn't know they knew anything about shot to nothings. That was pretty much what it was, a shot to nothing. See if I land on anything. If I get it in, great. I might not even be on anything. If I don't get it in, well, I'm hopefully I'm not screwed. I'm on something, but it's very tricky. I missed that. Oh, just about in. What a wonderful box. Well, we couldn't have played that any better. Superb positional shot. Sixteen. Oh, so nothing will happen there. But that's a Porsche. Well, yes. It's it's not a matter of you being com it's not a matter of you being idiot and not be able to put up my shots. It's a matter of just getting bad luck. It was a bit of a shot, and I think you know I wasn't fully expecting to be on something. These commentators can really annoy you on this game because they're just like, yeah, I didn't play for that though, or yeah, it was a matter of luck. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not a complete idiot. I didn't play that shot thinking it, everything was all going to be good. Unlike you might think. Yes, he's taking the Flipping it. This is tough. This is really tough. 
Oh, they hit that. It's a power bar. Just about on this blue. And that's pretty much... It's make or break for this frame, I think, being on this blue. You know? Could just have won us the frame there. That shot. And yeah, this wasn't the world's easiest pot, like I said. Oh, and that's a wonderful positional shot. Because now I've got both reds. And I now do do this a lot and play for the harder red when I've got an easier one. And I tend to miss the harder, but this is really easy. Um, not, and, you know, I don't want to have to play a good positional shot off the, red from, the other red from a cushion so that I can get onto that red easily when I'm already on that red, you know. I don't want to cause myself extra issues. I think when there's only two reds, I think it's a bit understandable to go for the harder one if you're on it. And said that, I'm not on the easy one. Well, I am on it, but it's not very easy. Oh, yeah, well, it's, it's not bad. I'm going to play this in a really tactical way. Play this so the cue ball lands pretty much behind the yellow. So if I miss this, he's, he shouldn't be on much. If I pop this, then I should be on a colour. I was gonna. I was, I was playing the yellow because I thought, yeah, I'm gonna have to play the nail the yellow next, but obviously not. Well, anything but the yellow here is frame ball, but the yellow means you can only tie anyway, so I think it's all right to go for. And the yellow will be frame ball anyway, so. Neil just said I'll be fuming about that. I was like, what was I supposed to play for the green there? Hey, why will I be fuming about that? I've just won the frame. I've just won the frame, like, what, what's there to be fuming about there? What a wonderful shot. So it looks like we will be getting out of this two apiece to call a bit of a result after the way we started. You know, probably should have been 3 1 up. Probably blew that second frame. Shame we couldn't make central in the third, but ultimately, boss, mediocre performance today. It was in a terrible part 100 because this has been a good break and a nice way to finish off. You know, break 44. It, it's going to leave, it, it, you finish on a high, I mean I know it's not a massive break, but 44, it, it's, it's a middle break, it's nearly a half century. So I'll take it, I'll take it and uh, yeah, I think, I think it's Jimmy Roberts that's breaking frame 5, so you can watch that. Yeah it is, it is. So yeah, I've caught up. Oh, looks exciting, but that's for next time. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. The uh, big milestone of the Snooker 90 and career mode series. Thank you for watching, guys. Hope you're having a great day. See you soon and goodbye.